The battle against malaria has spanned decades, but achievements in recent years suggest science might be gaining the upper hand. The World Health Organization has just approved a second vaccine, which is expected to be more affordable and produced on a large scale. Malaria kills half a million African children every year, but researchers believe these new vaccines could go a long way in saving lives. Parents in sub-Saharan Africa have reason to be afraid of malaria. In 2021, almost all of the more than 600,000 people known to have died from the disease lived on the continent. And the majority of them were children under the age of five. The hope now is that this new vaccine will mark a turning point. As a malaria researcher, I used to dream of the day when we would have a safe and effective vaccine against malaria. Now we have two. A first jab authorised by the WHO in 2021 has already been rolled out in several countries. But researchers say demand for malaria vaccines outstrips supply and that the new shot will be both cheaper and more widely available with up to 200 million doses being produced per year. Having a second vaccine available with similarly high efficacy, um, but also that has um, available supply and is priced to level that makes it a cost-effective intervention, is really going to have a dramatic impact in sub-Saharan Africa. For all the optimism, though, scientists stress that the new vaccine will not eradicate malaria, as it does not prevent transmission. They're calling it another vital weapon in the arsenal, alongside bed nets and insecticides. In Senegal, meanwhile, another solution is being worked on that could be a game changer. At Dakar's Institut Pasteur, they are developing mRNA vaccines, the type that stopped people dying en masse from COVID-19. The real potential of messenger RNA is you can crush the time between the detection of a disease and have this sequence available to the time that you have a vaccine available. And connecting this public health threat to the capacity to manufacture, develop and manufacture is really where you have the power of messenger RNA. While that may lie in the future, the new vaccine already looks set to reduce the risk of severe illness and to save the lives of countless children. Our first guest on the programme is Rose Leke. She's a distinguished scientist and immunologist from the University of Yaoundé in Cameroon. Welcome to DW News Africa, Professor Leke. Uh, you've dedicated your life to the fight against malaria among your many achievements, and you're here in Berlin to receive the 2023 Virchow Prize for Global Health. First of all, congratulations on that, and what does this recognition, this prize mean to you? It meant a lot to me if you're 76 years old coming from where I come from and when I didn't die of malaria or any of the other infectious diseases and got to this age and I've done all the work I've done over the years in malaria, in polio, in immunization, in the community, in fighting for women scientists and the rest and schooling and training of students. I've done this all my life and then I get this Lifetime Achievement Award and really is very dear to my heart. It's a great recognition, and I'm very grateful to the Visha Foundation for this, for this. Yes. Mm. Now, malaria isn't usually high up on the global agenda. Uh, do you think this award is, is a sign that things are changing? Things are true. Malaria, we've done so much has gone in. Talk of, you know, building capacity and funding and strategies. I've been part of the global malaria program WHO has in place, the first uh, malaria policy advisory committee that for the policy. I was a member of that, working with Dr. Pedro Alonso, Alonso and his group in Geneva and so on, and then carrying out research in malaria in my country and research in pregnant women and uh, doing the work we did in diagnosis and uh, also immune responses and so on. You know, and then looking the mosquito 
the fund, global fund has been going on with the distribution of nets, all the preventive measures, because you know malaria can be prevented, can be cured. But progress hasn't really gone on well on the African continent. It has stalled. And right now there are 11 countries that are really high impact, high burden, high impact countries. 10 of them in Africa and one is India. And more efforts are being put on to define all the strategies that one could use to move on the way forward for malaria. Also at Harvard University, they put on the Defeating Malaria program that I co-chair with uh, Professor Dian Worth. And we've been rethinking what other new strategies one can bring in to really help again move this forward. So we, you know, the work is, it's happening. The newest thing though, as you know, are the vaccines. That's one tool that we didn't have. There was the, you know, other tools, but we really needed a vaccine to come to the end. Right. And right now, yeah. beginning next year, there's vaccination of uh, children. We have the, RST, the RTS vaccine first, and then the R21 that was just approved also by WHO. So we have two new vaccines that can be used now for children. And that's going to help a lot severe malaria that was killing children a, ro a lot in Africa. And that's going to really, you know, the percentage is at least 30 to 70% efficacy for this. Right. And so we're counting on this new methods, this new tool now to help bring down that burden. Part of that is the uh, mention of the um, uh, mRNA-based vaccines. Of course, those uh, present certain challenges. But do you think these could be uh, a game changer for malaria prevention? Very much so. And I know presently there will be some production, I can tell you, even on the African continent itself, of these vaccines for malaria. There's plans going on with that for Kigali and other places. And I think, uh, you know, that is the way forward for us. And this new technology, so the innovations that have come out, thanks to, you know, COVID. We learned a lot from uh, COVID-19. I think that's part of the way with the mRNA vaccines that we're going to move forward in malaria also. It's in the pipeline, I know that. Right. We, we've seen the, the success of vaccination in getting rid of some diseases, like if you look at smallpox, for example, um, decades ago. Are you hopeful, even confident that we can do the same with malaria? Well, smallpox went. Next one to it is polio, which I chair the uh, African Certification Commission for Polio Eradication for our region. I chair that commission. And we're able, you know, for indigenous wild polio virus is gone out of the African, you know, the African region. And I read that declaration August 25th, 2020, and handed the certificate to the regional director. What's there for us really now is uh, the uh, vaccine-derived poliovirus, which is still prevalent in the region. And we're really hopeful that we can get rid of this. There are the new vaccines coming against that that should be able to move us forward in that area. So for polio, you know, we're like 99% really there. But that last 1%, it's really getting harder, but we will do it. With two countries still endemic for it, and then there's all the vaccine-derived poliviruses. So anyway, it was moving there. Malaria is still a little bit behind, but each, con each year, the Global Malaria Program receives, I mean, WHO does declare countries, you know, free of malaria, like China that used to have 30 million cases is now free from malaria and other small islands and so on. So we're hoping, you know, especially with the vaccines coming in, that we will see great improvements also in the, in the African region, yes. Okay, Professor Rose Leke, scientist and immunologist and the recipient of the 2023 Virtual Prize for Global Health. Thank you for speaking to us and once again, congratulations. Thank you very, very much. And it's really dear to my heart this prize and thank you for this interview for this morning.